to welcome back in to this edition of our weekly W2L11 weather hangout. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're on W2L11 Plus and maybe you found a regular routine of viewing this weather hangout on a W2L11 Plus or on YouTube, mm -hmm. another great place to do it. We've got meteorologist Diane Phillips and also meteorologist Matt Willoughby. And we are so ready to talk about more things all spring weather related, including baseball. Who's excited yes. for this? I wish that the home opener was today because I was outside this afternoon and it was fantastic. <laughs> so I was like, let's outside. do it. Yeah. But looks like we're going to have something differently. Oh. But we're, we'll, we need to chase the rain yeah. out of the picture for opening yeah. day. But if we want to look at it glass half full, mm -hmm. it is at least going to be a warm day. The biggest thing that we could, are concerned about this time of the year, really for any outdoor activities, is that uh, familiar lake breeze. And that is not expected yes. to be an issue as we go into Friday. So mm -hmm. it will be a warm breeze and hopefully a breeze that allows those balls to carry right out to center field. And we could see some home runs. That's Maybe what, a little sneak peek to that's coming up in a little bit, Diane. That's what I'm hoping. Even just <laughs> driving by, you know, the stadium, it's been a lot of fun this week to just kind of see, you know, the preps. And, um, you know, you have even a story coming up on how the grass is there. So yes. it's just exciting that, you know, mm -hmm. baseball is coming back to downtown Toledo and the season's right around the corner. What is one must-have snack item when you attend a baseball game? Always a hot dog for me. It's all, it, it has to be a hot dog. I was going to say yeah. that, that or ice cream, one of the two. You can sell me on like dollar dog night. Yes. I'm there, right? There's a dollar yeah. dog night. I did not know. If they this. don't have one, they should. Um, right? We'll have to check at the mud hands yeah. and see if they yeah. do. <laughs> I, I, it's not an uncommon thing for mm -hmm. many of the stadiums to do, uh, but yeah. that really gets people in the it, door. It's great when they do dollar dogs, dollar pops, you know, dollar ice cream sandwiches. I went to one of those games. Yeah, I, I would be a boo. Yeah, I'd be there. I was in heaven. Think, <laughs> you're making me think food now. I know. Yeah, we usually we talk about the weather, but it looks like food is a close food second. Is, yeah. <laughs> baseball. I think that's what we've covered so far in this weekly weather hangout. <laughs> food and baseball, but it's things that matter to you. We are eventually going to talk weather here. Mm -hmm. uh, Diane, we are going to talk a little baseball and weather coming up, yes. you and I, in a yep. little bit. Uh, Matt, what's going to be on tap for this week's weather hangout as well? Yeah, so we'll also be talking about uh, kind of the feeling, aching pain that you may get in the transitioning season. So uh, I don't know if you're feeling it yet or anything, but... We're both young enough for that. <laughs> Not yet, but I yet. do know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, this is the time of the year we call it a roller coaster ride yes. for various mm -hmm. reasons, whether whether it be uh, changes in temperature, barometric pressure, humidity levels, can actually impact how you feel. Did you learn a lot doing this story? Oh, yeah, I definitely did. Uh, and I would be deep diving how uh, you kind of alleviate that pain as well uh, okay. as you go throughout the spring months. So that'll be coming up in just a bit as well. So if you're feeling some aches and pains, Matt's got some tips for you coming up in a little bit. Uh, but also some really crazy images uh, that have been coming out of uh, the south. And unfortunately, uh, we're now in the wake of a devastating tornado that did impact Mississippi. Another tornado uh, that hit the state of Georgia. Matt, what is up with this here? Yeah, so this is actually satellite image of before and after uh, which were released by Maxar on a Sunday uh, shows some utter devastation in Rolling Fork, Mississippi after a deadly tornado tore through the town Unbelievable. on Friday mm. night. The images and video have just been a lot yes. to see coming out of that area. You know, it's hard to comprehend when you see images, but to understand that these are people's lives, mm -hmm. uh, their community that has been devastated, and a lot of the reports, remember that pit my stomach hearing Saturday morning, of course, seeing the images on Doppler radar as we typically do as meteorologists, mm -hmm. we knew it was going to be bad, but knowing that this is uh, leveled communities and destroyed communities, and this is the wide view of it uh, as it uh, went through uh, after dark as well. Yep. Uh, reports of up to around two dozen people that were killed in the state of Mississippi due to those tornadoes. Very tough, and of course, even you know the after dark factor even more Makes dangerous even more than dangerous. another level. Exactly. But we do also have another photo, though, coming in. This is an Aurora Chaser in Fairbanks, Alaska. They oh captured this, yes, stunning view wow. of the Northern Lights. And this was in the early hours of Friday, March 24th. The footage you're going to find here is kind of, well, the shooter said the most insane Aurora of my life. And he said he could not believe what he saw. How intense. Hence That's is that beautiful. video. <laughs> we have all said that this is absolutely on our bucket that list is. to see the northern beautiful. lights. This was a G4 geomagnetic storm. Uh, that's on a scale of one to five. Wow. And we haven't had a G4 storm in several years. Now, this was generally uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night of last week. Mm -hmm. We unfortunately had a lot of cloud cover last week. So it was not visible here in northern <laughs> Ohio. But had we had clear skies, there were reports Utah, New Mexico, 
northern Texas of the Northern Lights. Not quite as vivid as what you'd see up in Alaska, but you get the picture. It was maybe one day. I saw one photo from about two hours away that they were able to see it just north of the Toledo. I'd make Man. that road trip in a heartbeat. Yes, easily get in the car. All right, and finally here, we've got some CCT footage that was posted by Sam Strickland. He was an IT director at Amory School District. This shows what we talked about earlier, the tornado damage from the ceiling of the high school. Now, Strickland said other parts of the school, as we can here with tornadoes, some of it leveled and destroyed, other parts left freestanding. Uh, but just very fortunate that there was nobody in the building at that time, of course, with it being uh, very late after dark Friday night. Uh, but the reports of damage continue to come in across the south, and it will be weeks and months before they're really able to kind of fully assess the magnitude of the damage. Reminder to us as well, severe weather season. We talked yes. about that last week's episode, didn't we as well, Matt? Yes, we did. Yeah, uh, and is in full effect for this year. Of course, uh, parts of the south uh, already experiencing that uh, and will possibly for the next couple of months with severe weather season uh, just getting started. Next up, it will be us. So we'll be yes. prepared and we'll keep you safe when that does happen. Well, we appreciate you being with us so far. Just getting things kicked off here with our weekly weather hangout. We'll leave you with this quick weather fact and we're coming back and we're going to be talking baseball in just a few moments. And I think you were able to get that one right on the nose. And of course, much like we rate things, that is a, a zero through five scale with an EF5 being the strongest tornado. Now, let's get ready to play ball this week as we look forward to this upcoming Friday. And if you're going to be joining us uh, on YouTube or W2L 11 Plus, we're going to have full coverage all week long as we enter into opening day. So here's what's ahead. We do expect rain is going to be likely numerous showers. It is going to be warmer and windy with winds that will gust at times over 30 miles per hour. Hour. But let's put this in perspective because we've attended these opening days before and we know we could get just about anything uh, thrown at us when we're standing in the batter's box about opening day high. So let me take you back toward 2017. Uh, just over the past five years, we were around 55 degrees. But do you remember this? 2018, it was that glorious day we had. Well, boy, almost tens of thousands of people downtown Toledo. It was April 18th where we hit 70 five degrees back in 2018. Uh, it was expected to be and certainly was one of the bigger opening days uh, in Toledo's history since the Mudhens came back and relocated downtown Toledo. Uh, in 2019, 51 degrees on April 4th. And if you remember this, didn't actually have an opening day in the season of 2020. Uh, that season being suspended uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. So no season in 2020, but 2021, we came back in nice fashion. 65 degrees. That season did start a little bit later. It started on May 4th, and you may remember last year we did hit a high of 57 degrees for opening day. But if you're out at the game, you'd be thinking, I don't remember it being quite that warm. Well, they had that cooler lake breeze that came in, flushed us back into the upper 30s and low 40s by the time we actually went to play ball into the evening. So what to expect? Opening day. We're going to be seeing rain this year. The last time we experienced some opening day rain, it was just around a tenth of an inch of rain on opening day back in 2018. But do you remember this one? And this was just about 10 years ago. It was opening day in 2013. It was an absolute washout. We had well over an inch of rainfall and I'll tell you it was raining sideways. Winds gusting to 35 miles per hour. Cold and very wet. Mud ends played the whole game. They ended up losing the game four to one, but it was a near washout. Very miserable condition. So we could get just about anything, including even occasionally some snow on opening day. Now we're going to be seeing that this year. Absolutely not all going to be in the form of liquid quick hour by hour forecast take it through Thursday night. We do expect rain to be arriving by daybreak Friday morning showers going to continue. It may not be an entire day of a washout, but numerous chances of showers. But could we get a little pocket 
of some clearing or at least dry weather for a few hours to get a couple innings in. Absolutely going to be a possibility. So stay close and tune to that one. And we'll have updates on that W211 weather app of what to expect for opening day as we go through the week. More rain Friday night and into Saturday as it will be wet. At this point, we're going to call for low 60s. That first pitch is going to be warm, windy, but also wet. That wind out of the southwest will be quite gusty, right around 20 miles per hour. And even toward the last out, right around 60 degrees, with those winds still staying up there right around 20 miles per hour. Now, when we talk winds, and if we're thinking that southwest wind, that actually could be blowing from home plate out to center field. Let's bring in meteorologist Diane Phillips. Diane, nice thought to think about that. Maybe the wind at uh, our back. We could be talking some home runs, but weather, Diane, plays quite a bit into this, doesn't it? It does. The weather doesn't just affect us, the fans in the stands, but it can affect that home run ball. Thankfully, the southwest winds, though it may be a little bit of a nuisance for us on Friday, it could mean a W, and that's how we want to start out the season. But another thing that can come into play is, well, our air. So we can either have some cooler air, or we could have, you know, those hot summer days where it's nice and humid. Well, with Northwest Ohio, we can have any kind of weather for baseball. So let's first break down. Let's say we have a cold setup because that's what we're opening up the season with. So let's say you have our batter and they crack that ball and you can see while well, it's trying to go out there. When you have a little bit more of a cooler setup, you're going to find that your air particles are a lot closer together. That's why cold air it's a little more dense. So as that ball's trying to fly through, it's got all those air particles that it's trying to hit against and that's slow it down that's causing drag on the ball, which means that as you're trying to swing for the fences, you got to have a little extra oomph on that ball to get it there because it's just not going to travel as far when we have that cooler setup. But what about the hot humid conditions? Sometimes it feels like we can wear the air, but for baseball, it's kind of the opposite effect. We don't have as dense of air, so we're going to crack that home run and you can see there's not a lot of particles there, so it doesn't really cause a lot of drag that moisture on the ball to where then it's a little bit easier for us to well, swing for the fences and then have that souvenir for somebody in the stands to take home. So the humid air, it does have more water, but it's just not as heavy as what it is when we have that cooler air. Thus, it's the issue of drag. So that's really what we're going to be well monitoring as far as the weather conditions for getting and scoring those home runs. Of course, though, whenever you're headed out to the ball game, take the WTOL 11 weather app. You're able to look at the hourly forecast there. Also radar if you need it, probably Friday, you'll be using that tab a lot, but that's free to download and you can use it all season long. And even when you're not at the game, it's still going to provide a lot of helpful tools. And of course, we'll continue to have extras there on the app just like this and even more interesting weather stories on the app. So again, download that and when you head out to the game, have a lot of fun as well. But speaking of fun, we have another fun fact coming your way because we still have a little more to talk about. As weather patterns change from hot to cold or dry to wet, it can bring down your mood. But did you know it can physically affect your body as well? I'm going to show you exactly why that is. Take a look. Does the back and forth of weather conditions during this seasonal transition have you feeling achy? Dr. Ryan Shapiro with Prometica says he's been hearing it a lot. My patients, I feel like they can predict the weather when they're coming in. And a lot of that is due to the body's natural responses to these weathers. Um, there's been some talk about barometric pressure, which causes the joint, when that barometric pressure lowers and it gets, it brings in cold air, causes the joints to swell, which can give you pain, especially if you already have some underlying osteoarthritis there. With changing weather year round, the aches and pains can creep up on you at any time. It's, it's on and off throughout the year and the worsening times tend to be in these winter months and, and when this cold comes in and then we get warm again and cold and rainy during, especially during this month. 
So, you know, they tend to have chronic pain, unfortunately, but it tends to worsen during the winter months. But there are certain exercises to alleviate the pain. Especially during this time when we're getting these cold weather uh, fronts come in, I would, I would recommend keeping the area warm to start with, you know. So not going outside in shorts, especially if you have those type of pains in your knees or in your ankles. The joint pain that you feel could make you feel like resting is the only option. But experts say staying active may help. I think it's counterintuitive to most people because you want to sit still when you're hurting. But we find with working through chronic pain that the more you sit still and the more you don't move, you get less muscle support and you get more pain and buildup of inflammation inside of the joint. So uh, we recommend a good stretching program. Reporting in Toledo, I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby for WTOL 11. Wow, completely insane to think that 80% of the ocean isn't unexplored yet. So, wow, a, absolutely insane fact. Lots of area to cover, and it is uh, on deep, deep, deep under the yes. ocean in many areas. Yeah, just when you think, oh, it's only 8%, that's quite a bit. Yes. It, it certainly is, yeah. yeah. Well, this was fun. We had a good mm -hmm. time kind of being back with you. More fully into the spring mode, I think, at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, seeing those trends of uh, temperatures warming up just a little bit. So hopefully we can stay with that warming trend because... Uh, I'm kind of sick of the cold. I can't. <laughs> You're not the only person I've heard that from, yeah. and I'm saying it myself. I think I need 70s and sunny for about three straight days yes. and no wind. That's the big thing about this time of the year. Exactly. I mean, yes. relentless with the wind. Can we at least just kind of shut that wind machine off for a little bit? Yeah, I, I think it's plugged. The fans plugged in over there. I'm going to go unplug that after this. It's been, it's been Diane's fault. Yeah, so, I wow. forgot to unplug it. Sorry, everybody. Uh, we're getting there. Uh, hard to believe that we're turning the calendar to April. So, of course, we're going to ramp up our severe weather coverage mm -hmm. as we go through uh, the uh, upcoming weeks. And also, we're going to be talking a whole lot more about something that is going to be very big that you need to know about about one year from now it is the total solar eclipse that we have launched a whole host of content to get you prepared for and we'll talk much more about that in the coming days and weeks we thank you so much for being with us today on this weekly w211 weather hangout if you're watching on w211 plus or on youtube we wish you a fantastic day